welcome to Community Conversations. I'm your host, KK Kaneshiro. Even while working virtually, Fremont Unified students are still finding ways to make their mark on a national stage. The Coding Club at Horner Middle School was recently named semifinalist in the Samsung Sol for Tomorrow contest. They are now in the running to win up to $130,000 for their school in supplies and technology. Here to talk about their great project is Horner teacher and club advisor, Jason Wally, and along with some of the club members. Now, Jason, before we get started, could you introduce some of your students that are here with us? Sure. I have the honor and privilege of working with four of the club's members. We have Kevin Fang, we have Shuhan Jin, we have Arush Gupta, and we have Akarsh Kerr. And these four wonderful students are the team that competed in the Samsung Solve for Tomorrow competition. Great. Now, talk about this club that you have formed um, that you're the advisor for. How did you assemble these students and what is your goal? What's the history of the club? What did you want to do with it? Sure. Let me start a little bit with the history. Um, okay. This is the third year that we've had Coding Club. About okay. three years ago, a group of students of the eighth grade that year said, hey, we don't have anything for computer science at our school right now, no classes, and there were no clubs. And because I was coming on board as a STEAM teacher for the electives department, they asked if I'd be willing to be an advisor for a club. At okay. that time, I was already an advisor for a robotics club, but I agreed with them that we needed to have something in computer science. So we worked with our ASB and we created the coding club that year. And it's been running strong ever since. Um, every year, we typically have anywhere from 50 to 100 students showing wow. interest. Typically, we have only room for between 20 and 30 because we were in physical proximity prior to in per or distance learning. So when we were in person, we were space limited. So this year, even though distance learning was what we were working in, we decided to keep the numbers the same, not knowing if we would ever come back in person or not and overextend. So there's a lot of interest, but unfortunately, we can't support everybody because there's just not enough space. Right. As far as the selection process goes, um, three of these members are part of our officer crew and they go through an interview process that's pretty extensive and they go through some interviews, show what they're interested in, how they'd like to direct and lead the club because it is a student driven club. I'm there okay. to be the advisor off on the side that facilitates things. They make the decisions about if they want to compete or not compete. Solve for Tomorrow has been on our radar for the last three years, but this is the first year that we had a group of students, these four students, that felt like they were interested in participating. And boy, am I glad they did because <laughs> we're in the semifinals. And I know, it's exciting. Where it goes. Okay, so Kevin, are you the uh, president of the club? Yeah. Okay, so when, you know, in this day and age where everyone believes whatever's on TV, they believe whatever on the internet, Tackling misinformation in social media is huge, as well as also regular television media. How did your club decide to, as this your, to be your subject for this contest? So we decided on tackling misinformation as our subject for the contest because thinking about it, it's actually a huge problem in the world. Yes. Like even adults can get fooled by misinformation. And now that we're in distance learning where information is more easily accessible than ever, it's right. more easier than ever to be duped by misinformation. So that's why we chose to create truth in order to combat misinformation and keep and also inspire others to critically think before believing what they're reading or hearing. So because of that, is that how you came up with the group or the, uh, the project name Truth? Yeah, like that. that's really how we came up with the project name because it's a nice project name. It's short and it comes to really the point of the whole project, which is to make sure whatever, whoever's using the final product is actually reading what's true. Okay. So I heard that you guys are using artificial intelligence in your work. Um, and we hear about AI all over the place and all of the time. Can you explain to some of us who don't know what it is, what it is and how it has helped your project? So Kevin, why don't you start it off and then hand it off to Arush to answer some more details about the models we used. Yeah, so artificial intelligence is really just a set of computer algorithms that have the ability to take data and then sort of identify features about the data and then 
from that they can sort of adapt and take in new data and still give out a result. So the first step in really creating anything with artificial intelligence is in order to gather a data set. In this case, we had to have a data set of both true and false articles. How we gathered that at first was by doing it manually, but then as time went on, we needed a larger data set. So using the data that we already had, we tried to match articles with similar intent as what we had using natural language processing. And that's how we eventually expanded our data set to be which is currently about 50,000 articles. Wow. Oh my gosh. So, so really you want to speak to the model on that? How we came up with the use? Sure. So um, we did a lot of testing with different types of algorithms. Like Kevin said, machine learning is nothing but a, but a set of algorithms. So uh, we went through a lot of the more popular ones and a lot of the more adaptive ones. And we finally found something that would fit this theme of um, analyzing text. Wow. Okay. So, Jason, I know you said this in the beginning that the Samsung Solve Tour Tomorrow contest has been on your radar for the last few years. Um, at what point did you say, or did the club decide, okay, this is it, this is our time, we can challenge ourselves and we can enter this contest? What was that turning point for you? So we had a club meeting, I would say, in October, where we were really trying to decide what we wanted to do, what made sense to do in virtual learning, distance learning when we can't get together. And artificial intelligence popped up. And then Kevin and the rest of the team, Arush and Shuhan and Akarsh, we were just thinking, can we do this? Should we do it? And we said, nothing to lose. Let's try it. There's no <laughs> entry fee. And oh, nice. we're proud of the project. So uh, let's give it a shot. And December came around and we got an email and that initial email said, hey, you're a semifinalist. And at the time, honestly, I didn't know how special this really was because I'm like, okay, great. You know, there's a next step. Where are yeah. you going to go? And then I got about another 15 meeting invites from Samsung. We got paired up with a Samsung mentor and then we got grouped with some other problem-based learning specialists and videographers and wow. come to find out that we were one of 75 national semifinalists oh. out of tens of thousands of entries. So that's amazing. It became a much bigger deal. And just for qualifying as a semifinalist, our school is going to get a $15,000 award for STEM purchases to help out our school and more can potentially come after that. Nice, nice. That's amazing. Okay, so who wants to tell me about how the process for this competition uh, planned out? Did you, um, was it all virtual? Did you have to do uh, phone calls? How did this all happen? Shuhan, why don't you take that? Yeah, so um, all of our meetings are actually on Zoom. Okay. So um, we never met in person because of social distancing and we did everything online. And for the competition process, we, First, when we made it to semifinalists, we ended up having to do a video. And um, yeah, so we all worked together on that video and everyone videotaped themselves talking in short clips. And then Arush actually put together the clips and made an edit with it. Nice. So Arush, was that hard? Was it difficult for you to put that all together? Yeah, um, actually, a car. Sorry, not Arush, a car. Yeah. Oh, car, okay. Is he there? Oh yeah, uh, the process of putting the video together, um, it was a bit hard, but it took like one week and we could finish it. Nice, nice. So after you finished the video, what did your teammates say about the video? Were they impressed with it? Yeah, our uh, Samsung mentor really liked the video and our team really agreed on the video and loved it. Nice work. <laughs> Okay, so I don't know who wants to actually want to know about how all of you felt when you got the news that you were chosen as one of the semi 75 semi finalists. Talk about the day that you heard the news and what you felt about that, you know, what were your reactions? Were you shocked? Was it I mean, because this is your first year entering this contest, right? 
Yeah, so at first I was just sort of eh because I didn't really know the importance of the semifinals, but really when Mr. Wally mentioned to me that we're one of the 75 schools that actually got to the semifinals, it was sort of like mind blowing about <laughs> how well we did it. And, and really we're at the younger end of the spectrum because this competition goes all the way from sixth grade to 12th grade. Wow. And I believe there was tens of thousands of applicants, right, Jason? Yeah, they wouldn't release an exact number, but they said okay. that it was definitely more than that and that we should be proud. Yes, you should. So, Rish, what did you feel like? Um, it was pretty amazing. I mean, just considering the huge scale of applicants and <laughs> us being selected. Also, the fact that we're all, all learning together yeah. And um and the, the the fact that we were the first ones in like the history of coding club that ever attempted to do something like this, it was pretty cool. Yeah, that. Shuhan, what do you think? Yeah, so like Arush said, um, for all of us, it's the first competition that we've actually attended. So I don't think any of us really expected to get this far. And um, just the fact that on top of everything, we're working together not in person but online. So it just shows like. I guess even though we're in social distancing, we can still do things. Yeah, yeah. So Jason, was it just these core students of this uh, team that worked on this project or did the whole club help and then the, the team members went forward? So that's a great question. And the actual competition started as a club initiative Okay. And we have a activities coordinator who looked at some of the different opportunities. And we actually are competing in another competition as well that he scheduled. Oh, wow. And he had a group of about 10 people showing some interest. And then as we continued to work through it and time and dedication, um, attrition happened. And some people decided they wanted to work on other projects or other opportunities. And these were the four that really were committed and dedicated and wanted to show their STEM skills and bring their truth to more people. Nice. So when do you find out when you actually, because I know you guys are going to win. So when do you find this news out? Because you are in the top 10 finalists, right? As right now, right? No, we're, we're shooting for the top 10. We're okay. one of the top 75 and they will trim it down to a top 10 for their finalists. And then that's where we would have the in-person interviews that would be the next step. Okay. Um, we should find out in the next few weeks. They had a deadline of March 21st for turning in our three minute video that basically was a sales pitch of why our tool is important and how it solves a problem in our communities and in the world. And we're waiting to hear back on the evaluation of that against the competition rubric. And once we do, we get to see what's next or get some feedback about what they liked and where to improve if there isn't a next step. But like you, KK, I'm confident that we're going to be yes. in those finals. <laughs> yes, excellent. OK, so going back to Kevin, um, you know, your team has accomplished so much and we are so proud of you. Um, but how do you feel about making the top 10 as a Fremont? I mean, you know, you're in this competition, but you're also social distancing. You're also distance learning, and it's been tough. Have you learned anything from this process via Zoom, via distance learning, via social distancing, and, in, and getting something done? Yeah, like really, I learned the main thing of actually getting things done, especially doing distance learning, is just to plan everything out and have a timeline yes. of okay. what you want to do. Because if you just don't pace yourself, you're you're probably going to go off track and not get anything done. So that's how really how we managed to get so much done in such a short amount of time. And about going on to the next step, I'm pretty confident about that because we do okay. have quite a revolutionary project. And as the Primer team mentioned, which the Primer is really just a company that we met with and get, they gave us feedback. So they mentioned that no, nothing like this has ever been created before. Nice. So. I have to know, um, what's the next step for all of you? Do you guys all plan to, as this your future career? Do you want to carry on with this? Are you going to go through a different pathway? What are you going to do with this? Go ahead, Kevin. 
So I guess like I for my future career, I probably want to do something with computer science like this. And ter it turns out that I'm really starting to like data science, and I really do <laughs> enjoy analyzing data and using machine learning to process it. So I think I'll probably go into that field later on. Nice. How about the rest of you? Um. Yeah, I think computer science is something that I'm gonna stick with. But machine learning is really cool, like how it works and how the math behind it works as well. And um, I also really like working with like connecting different uh, things together. And when I grow up, I kind of want to connect people together as well. So nice, very nice. Who's next? Yeah. Um. So like Arush and Kevin, I really like computer science too, and I think throughout high school and like after college and even work, I want to be a software engineer or have something to do with that and like maybe start a business. <laughs> Good. Excellent. Uh, just like the rest of the team, I'd also want to take over like software and some maybe some machine learning and computer science. Excellent. So I'm counting on all of you to fix this world, okay? Are you game? Are you into that? Yeah? Kevin, yes? <laughs> okay, great. Well, I cannot express enough how... I know everyone is so proud of you guys. Congratulations to on the accomplishments you've done so far. And we all know that you're going to be the winners, right? Yeah? All in agreement? Definitely. Okay, good. <laughs> but we do thank you for being on this show. And from everyone here at Community Conversations, we appreciate you watching. And we'll see you next time. <laughs>